Ah, uh, 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 don't touch that dial. Randy's Old Time Radio Show presents... I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the sound of suspense. <laughs> in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the sound of suspense, to the fear you can hear. Welcome to the world of terrifying imagination. Our story is about a very old man living just outside a tiny village. A very old man whose long life has been lived close to the soil and close to the people he loved. People still living, and people long dead. Lie still. Lie still, girl. It, is it very bad? I don't know. She's very dear to me. If I should lose She's her... She's trying to raise her head. She knows I want to help her. Do you think you can? Young man, I never said I was a doctor. But I thought, I mean, the way I'm you... I'm just an old man. A very old man. Our mystery drama, A Very Old Man, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Santos Ortega. I'll be back shortly with Act One. long and carefully at the face of a tiny baby. Look carefully and long into the face of someone who is very old. Do you see the wisdom in both? The very young and the very old have wisdom. In between, there is only accumulated information. Oh, your home, good. Well, he's done it again. Who's done what? I... Are you talking about my father? You know I am. I warned him. I said, Stefan, if it ever gets around, you'll ruin my medical practice. People won't believe in me. They'll only... Be... Manfred, come sit down. Now, what's he done? Well, the same thing. Where is he? Isn't he home? Not yet. He went to the cemetery, as usual. But you still haven't told me what happened. Well, Anna Brandt came to see me about a month ago. Severe attacks of pain in the upper abdomen. All the symptoms indicated appendicitis. I sent her to Carl Weiss for the operation. Of course, he examined her, too. And he agreed with me. No doubt about it. Inflamed appendix had to come out. Well, he operated the next day. And that night, that same night, she had another attack. Well, so it wasn't... How really... could she have had another appendicitis attack when he'd just taken her appendix out? Well, he was as flabbergasted as I was. Yes, but what's it all got to do with my father? Stefan happened to be in my office the day Anna Brandt first came to see me. Oh. You know how he loves to hang around the office. Anna Brandt wasn't ten feet out of the office when he told me there's nothing wrong with her appendix. Oh, not again. I can't have my father-in-law, who's been a farmer all his life, telling me, a doctor with a reputation, that I don't know what's wrong with my own patients. Of course you can't. For a minute, I... I did think back to that boy, the one with the asthma. What seemed to be asthma, anyway. The Rothberg boy. Mm. Father was right about him. I know, I know. He made a lucky guess. Father went to see him every day. Talked to him, rubbed his chest, his throat. In two weeks, the boy was all right. The boy was hysterical, over-aspirated, nothing more. But this business with Anna Brandt... The day she came to see me, Stefan was asleep in the waiting room. I was explaining to Anna that I couldn't perform the operation, simple as it is, because of my hands, my arthritis. But I would send her to Carl Weiss. Well, she accepted that. Everybody knows about my arthritis. And she said something pleasant to Stefan. That was the first I knew that he wasn't asleep. Well, he didn't answer her. He just stared at her as though he'd never seen her before. I reached for the phone to call Carl Weiss. Stefan got up came over to the desk and took the receiver out of my hand. Manfred. Just step and don't. It's not so. Not so. <laughs> Have you had a bad dream, old man? It's not so what you said to Anna Brandt. 
There's nothing wrong with Anna Brandt's appendix. Stefan, don't start diagnosing again. You're not a doctor. There's nothing wrong. We had enough trouble after you diagnosed the Rothberg boy. The Rothberg boy never had asthma. All right, it turned out that he didn't. But that was a lucky guess. And it didn't do my reputation any good when word went around that you'd been right. I never told anybody. Yes, but the boy did. And his mother did. And people started coming to the house, coming here. All of them wanting to see you. But I told them to go away. It's not always that I can help. Well, I keep hoping, expecting God knows what miracles. Now are you going to start the whole thing up again with Anna Brandt? There are three of them. Come on now. Get your coat, Stefan. Her dark, brown or black, and hard, hard. It's getting late. They're the size of olive pits. Are you talking about Anna Brandt? I saw them close together. They were high in her body. About here. Three of them. You saw them, hmm? Three of them. The size of olive pits lying here above the stomach. About here. Have you got X-ray eyes, Stefan? Is that it? No. No, my eyes are like everybody's. Well, then, what do you mean you, 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 you saw them? Her body was transparent. I could see right through it. As though the skin had been removed. I could see everything. Carl Weiss was as confident as I was before the operation. And he was as confused as I was after. I swear I don't know what made me say it, but I said it. I said, Carl Weiss, cook of olive pits. Paul Stone, perhaps? Well, he was taken aback a little, but he couldn't deny a possibility. Maybe a remote one, but a possibility. I felt like a fool, but I told him I thought he should go ahead. And he did. This morning. And he found? Gallstones. Three of them. The size of olive pits. Lie still, girl. Is it very bad? I don't know. She, She's very dear to me. She's trying to raise her head. But she, she's trying to tell you something. She knows I want to help her. Do you think you can, Doctor? Young man, I never said I was a doctor. What? But the way you... I'm just an old man. A very old man. Well, I, I took it for granted the, the way you spoke. My son-in-law is a doctor. Manfred Gottlieb. I live with him and my daughter, Bertha. Oh, then then you know something. You've, you've learned things no, from him. No, I know nothing. Only what I see, what I feel. When I passed you by the cemetery, what were you doing? My wife is buried there. Did I harm her? No. No, I even think she's a, a little better. Her eyes, they, they look brighter. Not so full of pain. Should they be? Now let me. Well, your hands are warm. On a night like this, more than warm. Hot. Very hot, as though they were burning. Burning from inside. don't think I'd tell anyone. Well, these things have a way of leaking out. Oh, look, you're not going to tell Father, are you, that, that Carl Weiss found the three stones? You think I shouldn't? He wouldn't tell anyone. He didn't tell anyone about the Rothberg boy. It was the boy's mother who shouted it from the housetops. And look what happened. People showing up here. When he saw them, he, he hid in his room. And when they left, he went to the cemetery, sat by my mother's grave. You think that he's there now? Oh. I suppose. Sometimes he stays for hours. Oh, I wish he'd get home before the rain starts. Emily, my dear. Come now, Emily, my precious. I need you. 
You are my strength. I can do nothing without you. Come to me, my darling. Come to me, my darling. start thinking that any of this is real. He mustn't think that he has some some magical power. Listen, if you treat him as though he were possessed in some way, he might begin to believe it, and then his mind... Who knows what might happen? Bertha, have you thought that, well, that perhaps it's already happened? No. That he is deranged? I won't believe that. He's my father. I, I love him. He's, he's old and childish, and sometimes I'm impatient. I am, too, often. Only the way I'd be with a child. In many ways, he is my child. The only child I have. Oh, my dear. I thought you'd stop brooding about that. Oh, I have. I have. I, I stopped last year when I turned 40. But that's why. Because I have no child, he's, he's twice as precious to me. I understand. I do understand. You know that I'm fond of him. Then let's leave him as he is. Don't, don't let him think he's different from other people. Whatever you say. You know, the widow Holder has been asking for him. The widow Holder? Why? They keep telling me in the village that she has this great swelling on her head. Big as an egg. Yes, I've heard about it. And she's afraid of doctors. Bertha, you don't suppose... Oh. The rain it started. It's coming down like crazy. Oh. Oh, thank goodness. I made it. Just in time. But you shouldn't take such chances. Why weren't you home for dinner? Where have you been? I, I kept something hot for you. Uh, thank you, thank you. Now, give me your coat. That's it. Oh, where were you all this time? I didn't birth a tally at the cemetery. You didn't go to see anybody? No, I didn't go to see anybody. No. Here's a plate for you, Father. Nice pot roast and potatoes. Oh, thank you, Bertie. I'm sorry I wasn't here for dinner. I lost track at the time I ran into somebody. We talked a little. Oh. Manfred, let's go up to bed. Uh. Father, you, you'll be all right? Of course I'll be all right. Go to bed. Oh. <laughs> Good night, dear. Good night, daughter. Good night, Stan. Oh, uh, Manfred. Yeah? How is Anna Brandt? Anna Brandt? I thought about it tonight, in the cemetery. Is she all right? Yes, she's fine. I thought she was. I had a feeling... Good night. Enjoy your dinner. Good night. His asking about Anna Brett, he hasn't even mentioned her since that day in the office. Oh, Bertha, could he have heard about Carl Weiss finding the gallstones? Oh, he'd have said so. He always says precisely what's on his mind. There are times when I wish he didn't. Listen. Listen, he's, he's talking to himself in the kitchen. Sounds as though he's calling someone. Manfred, he's an old man. Leave him be. Oh, please close the door. Come to bed. It, it sounds like... like Amelie. What? Did, did you say Amelie? Wasn't that your mother's name? No. No, it was my sister's. Oh, Bertha, I, I never knew you had a sister. You never told me. It was so long ago, before I was born. Their first child. She only lived an hour. My mother told me they'd just agreed on a name. Father leaned over the crib to kiss her, and she was dead. But that, that was 45 years ago. All these years, he's never mentioned her. What was that? The door opened downstairs. Well, he's gone out. In this rain. Where could he have gone? There's only one place. He's gone to the, the cemetery. When those around us cannot understand, where do we turn? When the world is dark, where do we go? To the unknown? Or to the once familiar, the once well-known, the once well-loved. To those who have left the dark earth and moved into light. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. (laughs) 
Now, come back with me to the story of a very old man and the people who loved him and could not comprehend him or could not comprehend him because they loved him or because they tried too hard. Breakfast on the table, Manfred. All right, darling. Oh, well, did you talk to him? He's still asleep. Oh, let him sleep. After last night. Yes, we're lucky if he doesn't come down with pneumonia. He was drenched, Bertha, soaked clear through. Lying across your mother's grave with a rain beating down on him. Oh. Crying, Amelie, Amelie. As though his heart was broken. Amelie is buried next to mother. Bertha, are you going to ask him about her? Oh, it's been so long. Forty-five years. You know, in all that time, I've never heard him say her name. Naturally, I never mentioned it. She died years before I was born. Your mother never talked about her? Oh, just that once. When she told me she wanted to be buried near her. And how she died. Manfred, she was only one hour old. Yes, crib deaths. They happen. We don't know why. Well, they, they thought of naming me Amelie at first, my mother said. Mm, it's a pretty name. Now, uh, who's that? So early in the morning. Yes. Uh, is this the Gottlieb house? Yes, it is. And you're uh, Manfred Gottlieb, Dr. Gottlieb? Yes, I am. But I don't see patients at home. My office is... Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not a patient. The, uh, the patient's outside. Uh, well, bring the patient to my office in about an hour. No, there's no need. She's quite well. Completely cured. Well, then what's the point of... I hoped I could see the old man. Your, uh, your father-in-law, is he? Stefan? What's this about my father? Uh, madame, good morning. Beautiful morning, isn't it? After last night, all that rain. You... You wanted to see my father? If I may. Well, what about? Uh, he's asleep. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, um, when he does wake up, would you tell him the patient recovered and is better than ever? Lively, frisky, enjoying life to the full, romping in the fields. Uh, well, what patient is this? You said she's outside. Yes, right there. Look. Look, the picture of health. Hmm? I... I, I don't you, you see any. You don't mean... Well, not the horse. Yes, my prize mare, my favorite. I thought I might have to have her put away, but your father, madame. Oh, yes, it's all due to him. Well, when was this? When did you meet Stefan? Last night, just before the rain started. Didn't he tell you? Oh, well, come inside. Huh? Have some coffee with us. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Sit down. Manfred, get another cup. Uh, may I introduce myself? Otto Krauss. Well, I I'm Bertha Gottlieb. This is my husband. Oh, but then my father must have told you he, he lives with us. Your father is quite a man. Mm. Your coffee. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Mm. Yes. You see, I was returning to the village, and I was passing the cemetery. Suddenly the mare sank to her knees. Her legs seemed to give way completely. And there she lay on her side in the middle of the road. I, I was frantic. I... I thought perhaps a, a stone bruise, but but I looked at all four hooves. Nothing. And there I was, half a mile from home, my precious horse stretched out on the road and a storm coming up. And then I heard a sound coming from the cemetery. Someone calling a name. Was it Emily? Am yes, 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 something like that. I shouted for help. In a minute, an old man appeared. Stephen. My father. Yes. I asked him to help me, but I wasn't sure he even heard. He, he seemed very distraught. He went straight to the mare, knelt down and took her foreleg in his hands and started rubbing it very gently. He knew which one was hurting her. And after a while, the pain went out of her eyes. Couldn't understand it. It, it was something about the way he, he touched her. I, I asked to see his hands. And he held them out. And even before I touched them, I could feel the heat spreading out from them. Heat? What heat? Haven't you ever noticed? The extraordinary heat from his hands? Oh, I, I can't say that I have. Oh, but it's true. His hands give off a warmth. I, I can't believe you've never noticed it. But it could have been on such a wet, cold night. It only seemed that way to you. You imagined it. Oh, I suppose. I suppose that's possible, but I didn't imagine it when the mare got to her feet. Well, she was all right. I walked her home. I couldn't quite believe it all. I bedded her down, 
And this morning, all I could think was, I must tell the old man about it. There are stories going around about him in the village. Perhaps you've heard some of them? Well, I'm only here on a visit to see my aunt. I I don't live here. Well, he, he doesn't really do anything. He's just around, and people love him. They like to think because he's such a sweet old man that he can do things doctors can't do. And because he's such a very old man, we wouldn't want him to start thinking that there was anything miraculous about, well, about anything that happened quite naturally. Well, you think it might might affect him, might, might, might affect his mind in some way? He's a very old man. It, it could happen. Well, I suppose it's possible she wasn't really lame. Of course it's possible. Only... Ask him, will you? About his hands, those amazing hands. Yes, yes, we'll ask him. I mean, giving off that heat, I I felt it, you know. Well, I, I'll be getting along. My my aunt's expecting me. Well, we'll tell him you stopped by. Yes, yes, I wish you would. Tell him, and, and please, tell him thanks. We'll tell him. Do you think we should wake him? Come on, it's time. Yes. We have to tell him about the young man. And the horse. But we won't make anything out of it. Nothing at all. Just say that he dropped by. To say thanks, Mm. yes. Father? Stefan, are you awake? What time is it? Oh, it's almost nine o'clock. Why aren't you at your office? Well, it, uh... It seems that a young man stopped by to see us, Stefan. Actually, Father, he wanted to see you, but we told him you were sleeping. Why me? Well, it seems he met you on the road last night. He had a horse. A mare it was. That's right. The horse had a swelling. Do you feel well enough to get up now, Father? I think so. You're sure? After last night? I'm all right. All right, now, just let me help you out of bed, Stefan. No, I, I can manage. Give me your hand. Come on. Oh. That's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here are your slippers. Yeah, I will splash some water on my face. And then you'll have breakfast. Bertha. Bertha, his hands are as cold as mine. Colder. That young man did imagine it about his hands. You know how it is. If your hands are cold, anyone's feel warmer, even if they're only a little warmer than your own. And he'd been riding back from the village on horseback. So, of course, his hands were very cold. Of course, of course. My head is... Clearing a little. Oh, good. I'll go down and have some coffee ready for you. Thank you, my friend. And two eggs. Four minutes. Your clothes are on the bed, Father. Thank you, Bertha. Uh, Father, last night when Manfred and I came up to bed and you were eating your supper, anyway, that's what we thought you were doing. It's what I was doing. Well, we heard you talking. Was I talking? Well, you kept saying... We heard you say... Amelie... I said, what? Over and over. Father, were you talking to Emily? What do you know about Emily? Only what Mother told me. What did your mother tell you? That Emily died. That she only lived an hour. She was our first child. Forty-five years ago, Father. She died in the crib. I remember her so well. Why do you talk to her now, Father? Why do you call to her? Because... Because she comes back to me when I call her. Father, you don't mean that. She comes back to me. To me. Not to anyone else. Only to me when I call her. You don't believe in ghosts. Emily is not a ghost. Her spirit comes back to me when I call her. Father, you can't believe this. I am the only person left on earth she remembers. Her mother is dead. The midwife is dead. When I am dead, there will be no one for her to come back to. No reason to come back. You can't believe what you say. I don't have to believe. Or not believe. I know. I won't let you. You have nothing to say about it. Nothing. I will not stay in this house and listen to you tell me that my Emily will not come when I call. I'm going to her now. Father, wait. Father, come back. Stefan, what's the matter? Get out of my way. Stefan. Father. Well, he came tearing down the stairs. He brushed right past me. What's, what's the matter with him? I talked to him about Emily. I made him angry. Where's he gone? Do you know? To her. To Emily. Emily. I need you, darling. 
Come be with me, my darling. Your father needs you. I need you, my sweet Emily. Uh, old man? Oh, my Emily. Stefan? Emily. Stefan, can Emily. I help you, old man? Uh, No, no. Y- you remember me, don't you, from last night? Well, the man, young man with the mare. She was lame. Ah, uh-huh, you should see her now. They told me she's better. Better than better. Come, come have a look. Please, please come. Look there. Look, look at her. Oh, where's my friend? Not a sign of lameness. I came to your house a little while ago. You you were sleeping. Well, they told me you were there to say thanks. There was no need for that. Oh, I'd like to do more than just leave my thanks. I'd like to invite you to my aunt's place. Oh, no, no, I, I couldn't. No, no, I'd like you to meet my aunt, please. Uh, your aunt won't mind? No, not a bit. Come on, we'll both ride the mare. Here, I'll give you a leg up. You're... You're sure about your aunt now? Oh, she'll be delighted. She doesn't get out much these days. Is she very old? Well, she's not young, but that's not why she stays home. She has this uh, disfiguring growth on her head. It makes her shy. Well, she should see a doctor. No, no, she won't. Absolutely refuses, won't hear of it, hates them all. Oh, that's very wrong. Oh, yes, yes, all the money in the world and won't go to a doctor. So she sits in her parlor and reads her Bible... Ah, there. There's the house. Oh, yes. The big stone house. You know the house? I've admired it since I was a boy. My aunt bought it when my uncle died. My uncle was uh, Fritz Halder. You've heard of him, the manufacturer? I don't think so. Ah, around here, I understand my aunt is known as the Widow Halder. Some folks are afraid of one thing, some are afraid of another. Everyone who's afraid wants to run and hide. It's natural, most natural thing in the world. But what may be hiding in the hiding place? That's the question. It could be something else to be afraid of. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. is mounting the steps of a big stone house in the company of a very young man whose aunt is known to the village as the Widow Holder. Listen now. My, my aunt is in. Otto? Ah, there you are, just where I knew you'd be. Come in, come in, Stefan. Where have you been all morning, Otto? I missed you at breakfast. And I... Oh, you... you... You brought someone with you. Yes, this is the very wonderful man I met near the cemetery last night. When my mare went lame, Stefan, this is my aunt, Mrs. Halder. How good of you to come by. I do. I I don't have many visitors, not anymore. And I seldom go out because of this on my head. I I don't like to be seen. I, I hope it doesn't offend you. No. No. Doesn't offend me at all. Well, it offends me. Perhaps I'm too sensitive, but that's the way I am. So I sit here and read my Bible. And that Bible's too heavy for you to hold in your lap all day. But it's the family Bible. It's the one I'm used to. I love this Bible. All right, all right. Sit down, Stefan. I'm all right. I'll stand. Both of you, sit down. And Otto... You tell me where you've been all morning and why you weren't at breakfast. Now, I told you last night how the mare went lame and how I met Stefan near the cemetery. Well, this morning, I let her out of her stall and she was dancing on her toes. I couldn't believe it. Stefan hadn't done a thing but rub her postern a bit. Is that really all you did? I did nothing. Well, he talked to her, rubbed her foreleg and talked to her. How remarkable. You're a remarkable man. No, no. Oh, you, you're staring at me. Oh, I, I apologize. It's this awful growth. Otto, fetch me my shawl. I'll, I'll cover my head. No, no, no. Please, 
please. It's in my bedroom. I, I am not offended. I, I, I give you my word. Otto, don't go. No, no, it's all right. I'll be right back. Mrs. Holder, I am not offended. I am sorry I stared so. I will not stare again. Please forgive me. It's quite all right. Please, be calm. Sit down. I can't. Otto mentioned that you live with your daughter. Is that right? My daughter, Bertha. And your son-in-law. Manfred. They have children. No children. How sad. Oh, here comes Otto with my scarf. Mrs. Holder, forgive me, but I must take the Bible from you and... Stefan! Stefan, have you gone mad? Forgive me. I could not help myself. Aunt, Aunt, are you all right? I... I think so. Oh, I saw him take the Bible off your lap. Uh, Stefan. He, he hit me with it. He he brought it down on my head with all his strength. Forgive me, I didn't know what I was doing. I wouldn't hurt you, Mrs. Holder. I wouldn't hurt anybody. When I feel this way, I see things. I feel things. The Bible seemed to put itself in my hands. I didn't think what I was doing. I, I could not think. The feeling was so great that I must smash this this thing on your head. That's all I wanted to do, Mrs. Holder, to get rid of it. And it looks to me as though you'd done that, Stefan. I... Aunt, go look in the mirror. I know I'm not always in control of myself. I do things. I, 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 I don't know why. I see things. I don't know why. But I would never hurt anyone. Uh, it, it's unbelievable. The growth is gone. Will you forgive me? And there's no blood. No blood at all. All the same, I'm going to get you to a doctor. No doctors, no. No, a blow on the head like that. No, 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 I'm all right. My, my, my head is clearing now. It was just a shock. And that awful, ugly thing is gone. I don't need a doctor. Let me take you to my son-in-law. He's a fine doctor, a nice man. Maybe you've heard of him? Manfred Gottlieb? Gottlieb. Gottlieb? You will like him. Manfred Gottlieb is your son-in-law. A wonderful man. A good doctor. But you must be Bertha Gottlieb's father. You you cure the Rothberg boy. And I've heard talk about Anna Brandt. Look what you did for Otto's mare. Look what you've done for me. Oh. Why, you're the man I've been trying to find. I've been asking for you. It was God's hand let you hear. Let me take you to Manfred's office. I, I don't need him. I only need you. <laughs> If I've hurt your aunt in any way... We'll soon know. Otto, I don't want these spells that I have. I don't ask for them. Only sometimes the pain gets so great. What pain? Well, the pain of living. And it seems more than I can bear. I go to the grave of my wife and my baby daughter, my Emily. And I call to her, my little one... Who only had one hour of life. And she comes to me and gives me comfort and courage and belief. I believe that even though I can do nothing about the great pain of living, there are other pains and I can do something about them. I know I'm not quite myself when I'm like that. I know I'm not really strong or courageous. But when the spell is on me, the people in pain... They become transparent. You... You mean... You can see through them? I do see through them. How do you explain your hands? I... I uh, just hands? Oh, no. No, no. The night you massaged the mare, I took hold of your hands and they gave off a glow, a sort of radiating warmth. I know. I felt it. They... They burned like a steady flame. Perhaps I grow feverish when Emily is with me. Now, you go home and rest, Mrs. Holder. Come back in a few days and I'll change the bandage. Or you can do it yourself. I'll do it myself. She's all right, Doctor? Right as rain. Well, 
What what was it? I mean, the growth on her head. It was a wen, a common, ordinary wen, a hardened cyst. If you'd come to see me, Mrs. Halder, I might have recommended that you have it removed by surgery. Oh, no. On the other hand, I might have done precisely what my father-in-law did, broken it with some heavy object. <laughs> Probably not the Bible. <laughs> come, Aunt. I'll take you home. <laughs> and thank you. Dr. Gottlieb. Uh, you may get more of these growths, these winds on your head, Mrs. Holder, or someplace else on your body. Now, if you do, call me and I'll... Oh, I... no. No, thank you. I know whom to call. And you'll come, won't you, Stefan? Of course you will. No offense, Doctor, but I put my faith in Stefan. Goodbye. 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 Thank you. Goodbye, Stefan. No offense, doctor, but I put my faith in Stefan. Why did I bother to become a doctor at all? Why all those years at school? Why did I take examinations, get my license? What good is it if everyone would rather put their faith in a farmer? Manfred, I'll never do it again. Come in, the door's open. Oh, you again? A doctor, those pains are back. Well, of course those pains are back, because you've been drunk day and night. What do you expect? Well, can't you do something, doctor? No, I can't. Only you can. Stop drinking. You've been drinking steadily for 30 years, and you have cirrhosis of the liver. But, but the pains are awful. Stop drinking for a month, and then come back and see me, and don't come back before. <laughs> Silly old fool. Hasn't been sober for 10 minutes since he was 16. I Man can't help him if Manfred. he won't... Manfred, he has a... An obstruction of some kind. He has a diseased liver. But he has an obstruction in the intestines. Now, look, you're not starting all over again, are you? I saw. I could see. It. It's getting to be more than I can take, Stefan. You're interfering. I saw. He was standing in the doorway, and I saw. His body was transparent. I could see everything. In his intestines, there is an obstruction. And that's what gives him pain. Stop it, Stefan. I'm warning you. It's all so Clear, but I know. I'm going to stop it if I have to. Let you go. Let you go. Take a hurt on my throat. Oh, oh Stefan. Oh, Stefan, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to do... Stefan. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. Let me loosen your shirt. Oh, Stefan, I, I, I don't know what possessed me. I, I lost control. It's all right. Ste Ste Stefan, look. Look at my hands. Look how they move. M my fingers. No pain from the arthritis. What? What does it mean? It means... Well, it must mean the arthritis is better. It's gone, perhaps. Oh, man, Fred. The way I unbuttoned your shirt. So fast. No trouble. No pain. Is it possible? It's true. Look. Look how I can move them, Stefan. The way you used to... Stefan. Stefan, I... I felt the warmth Otto was talking about. The heat from your hands... When you were trying to tear my hands from your throat, I felt it. A warm glow. You really felt it? Yes, a glow. A radiance. Stefan, give me your hands. Yes. There it is. It's a fire. A fire. Bertha! Bertha! Bertha, please. I think you're wrong. No, how can I be wrong? Look at these fingers. Look how they move. Watch me unbutton my coat. Oh, Stefan, I had to lose my temper. Try to choke you in order to touch you. I might have killed you. Oh, you wouldn't Where's have. Bertha? Bertha! Manfred, you're excited. Excited? Now. I'm delirious. I can go back to surgery. We'll be rich again. Our lives will change. I, Yours, I, too. I don't want my life changed, Manfred. It means my daughter thinks me mad. Oh, she won't. It's only when my Amelie is with me, my little one, that I see him. It's Amelie who gives me the power. Bertha, Bertha, where are you? Are you upstairs? I'm nothing without Amelie. It's her innocent soul that enters into me. What are you doing home at this hour? Bertha, where, where were you? Oh, I, I was taking a nap. Amelie. Bertha, Bertha, look. Amelie. My hands. Look, look how my fingers move. 
What happened? Your father. Your father happened. His wonderful hands. Bertha, you remember the young man with the mare? How Stefan put his hands on the mare's foreleg and the mare got up and walked? We don't know that. It's true. It's true. You haven't seen the mare? It happened to me. To me. Believe me. I can't. I didn't believe it either. But but then Mrs. Holder came to the office. Mrs. Holder? Yes, she's the aunt of the young man with the mare. Stefan went to see Mrs. Holder. He didn't. Her nephew took him there, Bertha. And Stefan broke the wen on her head with a big Bible. Oh, no. He did right, Bertha, right. It was only a wen and he was right. He didn't know what he was doing and he was right. Manfred, Manfred, you must stop this, this talk. Bertha, Bertha, after Mrs. Holder left, an old patient of mine came in. The man has been a drunk for years. I was sure his liver was enlarged, diseased. But I sent him away. And then your father said... Manfred, you are wrong. The man has an obstruction. His intestines are blocked. You believed him? No, I didn't believe him. I was out of my mind with rage that he would dare to tell me that I was wrong. And I... But Bertha, I took him by the throat. He tried to tear my hands away, and it was then. Bertha, it was... It was then that I felt the heat. The blessed heat from his hands entering into mine. Now look. Look. Bertha... If he can use his hands, be happy. Father, how long will it last? How can I know? Your moods, your your spells, they've bewitched us all. I never meant harm. Well, they've got to stop. I, I want you to stay away from the cemetery. I'll stay away. I'll watch you every minute. If you like. I won't let you out of my sight. I'll treat you like a child. As you were. Because you are a child. I am a very old man. From now on, you're my child. No. From now on, you will have your own child. A real child. Not me. What? I can see. The child is growing inside you. Soon you'll know it yourself. Next spring... You will bear your child, and it will be beautiful. A little girl. And you will... I hope you will give her the beautiful name of Emily. Father! Then my Emily can rest. I won't have to call her anymore. She can rest. The dictionary defines it. To kill with premeditated malice. The wrongful, intentional slaying of one human being by another. But don't let a wee bit of murder upset you, friends. The people on Mystery Theater don't mind being in a dictionary. No? Then I'll tell you how the dictionary defines it. To kill with premeditated malice. The wrongful, intentional slaying of one human being by another. But don't let a wee bit of murder upset you, friends. The people on Mystery Theater don't mind being killed. Not a bit. Because every one of them is a dead head. Our cast included Santos Ortega, Norman Rose, Bryna Rayburn, and Billy Redfield. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Wasatch front weather, cloudy, turning cooler, widely scattered showers and a few... Of all the great killers of history, perhaps the deadliest and most terrifying is the automobile. Nero, Attila the Hun, Bluebeard, even artillery fire, and the ultimate, the atom bomb. At least they have a purpose, a reason, a rational...